Hey, welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast brought to you by LinkSoul, and Happy New Year to everybody. This is the first official 18 Strong episode of 2021, and we're chatting today with Blair Wheeler. Blair is uh, a man of many hats, but is known as a golf influencer, and so he is unlike many of the other guests we've had on the show. He's not a PGA Tour pro. He's not a PGA Tour coach. He's not a sports psychologist. He's not a fitness professional, but Blair is a guy like us. He's a guy who's working on his golf game. He's an 11 handicap, and he is making part of his living as a golf influencer, working with incredible brands like PXG, working with some incredible coaches, and buddying up with PGA Tour pros like Scott Stallings to not only play some golf, but also on the fitness front. And so it was kind of a cool conversation to talk to Blair about, you know, the journey that he's on, just like many of us are on, to not suck at golf, basically, to become the golfer that he wants to be while also having a job, having kids, and not having all the time that a tour player does. Oftentimes, we relate a lot of the things that we talk about on this show or in the golf magazines kind of with the the vision of what the, the tour pro is doing and what they do to get better. But what about us regular guys? What about the guys that are struggling to be single-digit handicaps? What are the things that, that a guy can do to go from a 20 handicap down to a 10 handicap? And so that's really what we're talking to Blair about. We're also talking about you know how he just got into this role and how this whole journey started and what cool things are happening and coming along his path. This year in... 2021, 18 Strong has a lot of things going on. We have the new golf fitness app that we just put out. So you can go to 18strong.com and get your seven-day free trial of our golf fitness app, which basically lays out a plan for you to become the best version of you to play your best golf. Many golfers don't have a program, don't have a plan to follow, and they're just picking and choosing exercises that they do randomly or that they don't do. And so as we talk about with Blair today, it's about becoming a better athlete, becoming a better version of you, and you can do that with the 18 Strong Golf Fitness app. So go to 18strong.com. It's right on the homepage. You've got a, a video of me right there walking you through how to get your free seven-day trial. And before we jump into our episode and our interview with Blair, I want to say a quick thanks to our sponsor, for this week and all of the weeks of the episodes of the 18 Strong Podcast, and that is Link Soul, our favorite brand of, of golf apparel. I want to talk about the cotton cashmere hoodie sweater that I'm wearing right now. It's the most comfortable, casual piece of clothing that you can wear to a nice restaurant. You can wear on the golf course now that hoodies are kind of a thing on the golf course, right? And you can pretty much wear it with anything, jeans, slacks, you name it. So go to 18strong.com slash Linksoul. You can get 20% off of anything in your cart over there at Linksoul. Again, our favorite favorite brand of apparel for on the course and off the course, being able to transition seamlessly into a casual setting from the golf setting. All right, let's jump into our episode with Blair Wheeler. Blair Wheeler, welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast, man. Hey, thanks for having me, dude. Appreciate you, appreciate you letting me come on. Yeah, for sure. This is going to be a fun chat. This will be a little different than, you know, a lot of the other guests that we've had on that are, you know, like coaches of PGA Tour players or PGA Tour players or something like that. So first, how would you describe, I know you you wear several several hats in what you're doing these days, but how would you describe your role in this wonderful, wor- wonderful world of golf? Oh, um, well, it depends on the time of day. Uh, cause I do work a real job. So, I mean, I guess the best, that's the best way people know me is a content creator, a podcaster, um, a digital media personality. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just an average golfer, just like everybody else. I'm an 11.2 handicap on the gin currently, but that's trending down. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, like you said, I wear a few different hats. Well, you know, I probably came across your Instagram page I don't know, several months ago and saw you working out with Scott Stallings and was like, oh, you know, what's this guy doing? What's Blair doing? And then have just kind of been following. And then, you know, you and I have gotten a a chance to chat and just kind of connect over social media. And and I think it's a cool conversation to have of, you know, because you are very much like me. I'm an 11 
point eight right now. So you've got me beat. Hopefully, oh, mine's we, we trending. Have a good match, though. Yeah, hopefully, mine's trending down in twenty one as well. But I think that most of the guys listening to this podcast are probably closer to where we are as opposed to a lot of the PGA Tour players that I talk to, that you talk to, and um, so I, I think that you know us having a conversation about you know what your goals are, what you're trying to do, and really kind of taking people along this journey that you're on as far as trying to become a better golfer. So first of all, what, what would you say is kind of your goal and your mission in documenting a lot of what you're doing? Um, I mean, my overarching goal, my North star, if you will, is just give people an insight and a consolidated way in which I'm getting better at golf, right? Like anybody can go get a lesson. Anybody could watch YouTube videos on how to get better. But at the end of the day, it might go over their head, whatever the, like, in terms of a lesson, you might remember one or two things from that. And then at that point, a lot of people just don't take lessons and they're just trying to get better themselves by going to the driving range or whatever else. So my whole goal with this is to share my journey, share what I'm doing to get better, whether it be fitness or whether it be uh, on the golf course or on the, on the driving range, that people might be able to pull a little bit of tidbits from it because i mean i'm not a golf pro and i just posted an instagram video about that like why am i giving swing tips because one of the things that i've always been told is taking swing tips from joe schmo on the range is like getting legal advice from your doctor (laughs) probably not it's probably not the best idea so why am i an 11 handicap giving people drills and swing tips is because I have access to a lot of people like that are way smarter than me on every aspect from fitness to golf to everything else. Uh, they're giving me tips. They're showing me how to get better. They're helping me get better. And I'm trying to consolidate, consolidate that information and make it more digestible to the average golfer. What I like is that you know, people love stories too. You know, so like people can read a magazine article, they can, they can watch a swing tip video, but as they kind of follow along with a story like yours and and watch what you're doing and watch the ups and the downs, because that's, that's part of it too, right? Documenting both, Hey, here's the, the, the cool thing that I did, but here's when I sucked today. And here's, here's why that happened. So people can relate to that. So, you know, I I imagine there's a lot of people that will be inspired by, you know, like, Hey, maybe because you, you worked out. In fact, there was one post, it might've been Christmas morning, I saw that you did a Christmas morning workout and I'm like, son of a bitch, I didn't, I didn't work out this morning. So it made me do something that day. So it's like, you know, it's those little things, but take, rewind back a little bit. Take me back to, um, first of all, just kind of your golf background and fitness background and what then made you to decide to kind of go on this journey. Uh, I mean, the journey kind of happened organically. I've always played golf. I grew up in Myrtle beach, South Carolina. If you're on the East Coast, if you're a golfer, you've heard of Myrtle Beach. I mean, it's growing up there. It's uh, it's hard not to play golf. It's, it's easier to play golf than not to. So I think there's 87 or 112. When I was growing up, there was like over 100 public golf courses in Myrtle Beach. I could just walk on and play, pay the pay the greens fee or whatever. Um, played in junior leagues, but with that, I played every sport under the sun. Like in high school, I surfed competitively, which then led to a semi-pro career, I guess, um, and then led to my my job at Nike. Um, but I surfed, I played football for the high school, like in high school, played on the golf team, played the baseball team, um, ran cross country, ran track, like did a little everything, right? Uh, and then moving on, I kind of would come in and out of the game. I would catch the bug for times. I would lose it. I wouldn't want to play golf for a while. Um, and there was a time that I didn't play golf I didn't touch a golf club for like like three or four years through college. And I went to Coastal Carolina with, while DJ was there um, at the tail end of his career there. But, um, I mean, I, I just didn't want to play golf. It just, it just wasn't a thing. I, I had better things to do in my mind. Um, then getting married and getting engaged, my, uh, my father-in-law is a really good golfer. He's like a six handicap, six or seven. And I'm really competitive. I hate losing. I, I hate losing more than I like winning, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I just don't want to lose, period. No matter if I'm playing with my buddies here in Wilmington at River Landing or I'm playing with my father-in-law, which is even more painful to lose to. 
right? So I just started playing a lot of golf, started golfing more than I was surfing and doing everything else and just kind of go, went, going on that journey. At the same time, I was growing an Instagram following organically just from my job at Hurley, from my job at Nike, showcasing like kind of my life a little bit. And that was right at the influx or the, uh, the fluxion point of influencer marketing, right? So I saw that there could be some sort of story to tell around what I was doing as an average golfer and it's just started organically talking about it, started talking about you know, what I shot. I shot 96 today at the die course and in, in, at Fairfoot, uh, Fairfoot Resort or I was at the range working on this or I got a lesson from so-and-so and, and that led to me and Scott getting to know each other through fitness and through CrossFit and and uh, it's kind of just been a snowball effect ever since and, and only uh, opening more and more doors. Now, how did you and Scott connect? Because is he is he there too? Or I thought he was in Scottsdale or what's the connection? He's in Tennessee. So Scott's based out of oh, that's right. uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And he and I just, um, I mean, we're Instagram friends basically. So he, uh, he followed me on Instagram. I've been following him because he has, I mean, obviously the golf stuff and CrossFit is something that we both are uh, really into. And we had DM back and forth. I've always been around like professional athletes throughout my career, um, semi-professional surfer and then working for in the marketing department for Nike. Being around PGA Tour players or NFL players isn't something that like awes me, right? They're just average people. They're just way better at whatever they're doing. So we got to know each other. He invited me to Kiowa with him when he was in um, Kiowa right before the tour restart uh, this this year. I guess that was in May. And then once uh, I, I went down there, we worked out, we played golf, and kind of just been friends ever since. Yeah, he's become kind of the uh, the poster child on the fitness front for everything oh, sure. golf related. I mean, the guys, it, it's awesome because we had Scott on our show, man, this was probably three or four years ago. And so it was kind of when he had just gotten over that whole, um, you know, he had the, the performance enhancement drug testing thing. It was kind of, there was a whole yeah. weird deal, right? Um, yeah, got banned for a little bit. Yeah. And then, and then like, that's when he had really kind of shifted his fitness level and everything. And we had him on and then it's been unbelievable just to see the change in his body over the past his body, his performance, and just his mentality uh, going into his preparation and everything. It's, it's been really kind of cool to see. And so it's, it's just kind of a natural fit that, that you guys are connected in that yeah. way. Tell me a little bit about CrossFit and golf. Uh, obviously, you know, there's, there's different viewpoints of CrossFit in the fitness world. And I've, I don't have a whole lot of experience. And I try not to speak too much on things that I don't have experience with. Um, but obviously CrossFit is not designed for golfers, but what has been your experience in utilizing CrossFit workouts and what else do you bring in or what do you subtract from those workouts in order to make it a little bit more geared towards what you're trying to do on the golf course? So I like CrossFit, maybe not because it's impactful to your golf game and is, is designed to make you a better golfer. Like if you go to, um, Joey D or Colby Wayne or one of those guys that are golf trainers. CrossFit isn't necessarily meant to make you a better golfer, but in my mind, it makes you a better athlete, a more fit person, and then allows you to be better at golf because you have better body awareness or you're stronger or you can more accurately um, adjust the weight and not hurt yourself or swing a little harder. Um, it, it alleviates a lot of pain and, and increases your cardiovascular strength and everything under the sun. I, I feel like CrossFit when done properly, it can be done wrong and it can really screw you up. Uh, but when done properly, when coached, it's a great, it's a great way to increase your fitness quickly and thus help your golf game because you're not going to be sucking wind by the 13th hole or your, uh, if, if, you're in competition, like, you know, you've been there, your heart rate's been elevated during those CrossFit workouts and you know how to control your body and control your mind going into like the later parts of the match. One of the things that I really try to get across to people is, is exactly what you just said. Like just being a more fit human being is 
going to do so many great things. Uh, we get so focused on, well, is this exercise good, exercise good for helping my swing? It's like, well, if it's going to help your body move better, if it's going to give you more energy at the, you know, the, the 16th yeah. hole, when normally you're dragging and you know, you're making lazy swings, then yes, it's going to help your swing. I'm curious, how old are you again? I know you've got two, two little ones, 31. 31. Yeah. So, I, I have six month old twins and I'm 31. So Okay. So you're aging quickly then with the, with those twins at home yeah. for sure. Also, if you can't see, I don't know if the camera is that good, but I'm starting to get some grays in my beard a little bit and they're not even grays. I'm going full white. And <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Aging quickly. Yeah. So I'm curious as a 31 year old now, now you've got kids. So the game has completely changed as far as, you know, your real priorities, your real responsibilities, those kinds of things. Um, mm-hmm. in that, in, that whole conversation of, you know, golf specific fitness versus fitness versus being just a, a better moving person. Do you find that that has, has kind of shifted a little bit? I mean, did you, at one point, were you more golf specific or do you kind of see yourself going more golf specific or is this just more, I'm just trying to be a better athlete. I'm just trying to be a better athlete. Like the golf specific stuff, like I'll do golf specific stretches and a lot of mobility work. Because if you're if you're adding weight, if you're getting stronger, like the stuff Bryson's doing, um, you you still have to keep your mobility. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to swing. And that's been the big thing that I've always heard, right? Like lifting weights is bad for your golf game. You're going to bulk up. You're not going to be able to swing as much. Well, that's not true if you're continuing mobility throughout that. So I still do a lot of mobility. Um, I should do more than I do, but yeah, I mean that's just I think everybody should probably do mobility more mobility than they do. So I do a lot of mobility work. Um, and with that, there's some golf specific stretches I do. I just posted an Instagram video the other day talking about one of the things I do with a rubber band and a pull-up bar, just stretching out your obliques and your, uh, your low back, your upper back, turning into uh, how you would turn into the golf swing and using a, a rubber band to really increase the resistance for that. So, but yeah, I don't do, and I never have done any golf specific specific workouts i got into crossfit when i was probably around like 25 24 um living in california i was able to go to crossfit invictus and uh, crossfit orange county and crossfit chalk in right there in orange county and newport beach and stuff and trained with a lot of really really high level um, crossfit coaches so i got into it i love the fact that from a competitive standpoint you're always competing with somebody or you're competing against yourself on the clock. So every day you have a goal and you have something to beat. Whereas if you just go to whatever planet fitness and do curls, like what's the point in, in my mind? Gotcha. When, when you're like working your regular job, you've got the kids at home, what does your normal weekly schedule kind of look like as far as your, your golf is concerned, your workouts are concerned? So, I'll go to the range like maybe two or three times a week if I have time. My wife and I both work from home exclusively. Like I said, I have a real job. My wife has a real job. We're normal people at the end of the day. I'm not an Instagram influencer and just do social media all day. Um, But I work a nine to five, right? And I have some other things that I'm working on that take up more time than that. So I'll wake up between five and 5.30 every day start working out or have a cup of coffee, have my pre-workout X endurance stuff um, between 5.45 and 6.15, somewhere in that window, and then start working out around 6.30, uh, 6.30, 6.45, be done with my workout by like 7.30, 7.45, and then shower and straight to my office and start plugging away. And then that's if I don't have the kids that day. Right. My wife and I kind of split up our day. She goes to the gym Tuesday, Thursday in the mornings. I take the kids Tuesday, Thursdays. Uh, I get to the gym on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. She goes to the gym on Saturday. So it's it's a constant juggle, man. Having kids really, it didn't throw a wrench in it, but it, it definitely, you need more planning and you need to be on the same page. And uh, if you, you have to make things a priority, whether it be your relationship or your fitness or whatever you want to do it has to be a priority it's definitely a logistical game and you know when people see 
oh, Blair's at the at the range today or Blair's out putting. They don't realize like that that's time that you have to like carve out and then you've got the back end side of then posting and all that stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of pieces. For sure. And I mean, I post almost every day, if not every day, a couple times a day about golf and, and some golf content or fitness content or something. Nine times out of 10, I'm not at the golf course when I'm posting that. So there's a look behind the camera, people, a little, <laughs> little trade secret, if you will. Um, I'll go to, and I'll, I'll go to the golf course. I'll film a bunch of videos on like Sunday afternoon or something when Alex has the kids and save them and stockpile them for the next week. So, and it's all about, it, I didn't do that until we had kids, right? Cause it's all about juggling and time uh, and making sure you have the, the right time for the right stuff. So who are some of the, the coaches and some of the people that you've gotten to meet through this whole experience? I'm sure there's been some people that have influenced, you know, what you're doing out on the practice range, you know, what, what you're doing with your swing, what you're trying to do with your game. What are some of the connections that you've been able to make? Yeah, I mean, we talked about Scott. Scott's been a great asset um, and friend. I'll just send him swing videos and in between roasting me about how bad I am and how bad my swing is uh, and how much he's going to beat me the next time. He will give me a lot of tips and has given me some really good drills to do. Um, Alex Riggs, I, I work with him a good bit, um, and he's one of the premier coaches in the world based in Dubai. We do a lot of stuff digitally. A recurring co-host guest on my podcast as well. Um, great guy, great coach. Then we have uh, Chad Darby. I've been working with him as of late. Chad is the director of instruction at David Tom's Academy in, I believe it's in Mississippi um, or Alabama, one, somewhere in the deep south. And he, he's been really helpful. Um, but, I mean, it's just been cool. I've gotten to meet a lot of people. Through, through social media, right? Justin Rose that, that you know, on that list, Ricky Fowler. Um, the, my PXG sponsorship or partnership is going to be really cool because that's really going to open up some doors. And um, to give you a look behind the curtain, Gary Player is on, on the short list, Darius Rucker. Um, and, I mean, it, it, it's just amazing what can happen and what kind of doors can open through knowing somebody or whatever else. So it's been, it's been a fun ride, and I'm looking forward to uh, – next man yeah i'm really curious about the the pxg stuff because obviously you know most people would think like first of all premier golf brand um they're looking for you know pj tour pros to represent it and pxg isn't really you know your everyday average joe price point as well for for clubs so what is it that connected you with them and why were they like yeah you know what this guy this guy is somebody that we should have on our our role as far as, you know, helping to get the word out on PXG. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned first that it's not for everybody and it's that premium price point and it is right. Like PXG is the, let's say the Mercedes Benz of golf, right? You can get a $500,000 car at the top end of the spectrum, or you can get your, your 0311 irons that are fit for you and the Proto X driver and all that stuff that, that is P- what PXG is known for, that high dollar price point. But now they just released that whole new line, the 0211 line, that is almost just as good. I hit them during my fitting and they were, I was blown away by them. And they're just under like a tailor made price point if you're getting the P790s or P770s or something. They're right there in terms of price with everybody else. And it's something that they haven't really touched on yet. Uh, it, those, those stories are rolling out over the next few months, which is why they, they wanted to work with me, right? They love what I'm doing as far as wanting to get better at the game and how I'm approaching getting better. But at the same time, they want to utilize me as a mouthpiece for the brand, right? They want to be able to talk about that 0211 line, get it out to more people so people know it's not just that $3,000 a club price. It's not $3,000, but you know what I'm saying? That right. really, yeah. really high end expensive per club price. They also have a line that is for everybody else. And, and together, we're going to be telling a lot of those stories. And it, it, it's a cool partnership. And it truly is a partnership, right? It's not just a lot. It, it's not just what you see a lot of influencers 
influencer is doing. Um, for those of you listening on audio, just use air quotes. <laughs> and yeah, it's not just what you see a lot of influencers doing with just posting about the product. It's more than that. It's really diving into the marketing and really diving in to how can we tell the story of why PXG makes clubs the way nobody else does and why it's there's clubs for everybody now. Well, so I assume you get to go out and you said you went and got fitted for the clubs. You got to hit the different styles and everything. Mm -hmm. What has that done just for your game? Because most golfers um, around our range, and I'm, I'm guilty too, I have not gone and got a professional, gotten a professional club fitting. Uh, but what has that done for your game? Just knowing that, hey, these things were built and designed specifically for my swing, specifically for my game. I mean, it's eliminated my big miss, which has up to this point been a big old Bubba banana slice, right? Like that's been my miss because I'm strong enough where I can hit it just as far as I need to, but only swinging with my arms and my upper body. Like they're not really using my, my hips and my legs and my low body at all, which is not ideal. So with getting fit, they were able to look at what my miss was and build clubs within their range that has basically eliminated that like my miss now is a duck hook not a big slice and i haven't changed much with my swing well my swing has changed from when i started this to now definitely but from a month ago to now my swing hasn't changed much and my miss has my clubs have and it's been cool to see that that they can just tailor your clubs to eliminate what your miss is. And then you build your game, your new game around that. And the clubs too, like I've gained about 15 yards per club and they're a little stronger lofted than the clubs I was using before. But the big thing is I've, I've, they're more forgiving, right? Like if I hit one low groove or I hit one toey, it's not going to go a hundred yards. It's, it's, and my seven iron goes 175, right? If I hit one toey before, my seven iron would go 100 yards. If I hit one toey now, it would go like 155. Right. What um, What are some of the things that you're working on specifically on the game these days? Uh, do you have? Or what's your game like? First of all, we know you're 11.2 handicap, but what what are what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Would you say? Bro, it changes every day. <laughs> I, hear, you. I hear you, dude. Every time I go to the course, like I could be striking the ball, and I, and the last time I played, my short game is really good. And I was chipping it to like inches every every time I stepped into a, ch a chip. I was just really locked in. Go the next day, I'm striking the ball and I can't chip to save my life. So overall, like I need, I'm working on consistency and building that consistency into my game so I can bring the same game every time, right? Like my swing's getting better. I'm I, I used to have the club face like really wide open at the top. Uh, I've worked on closing that. I've worked on getting it more on plane and swinging through my whole body rather than just swinging with my arms. I mean, there, there's been a lot of work that's been done on my swing and in my golf game. But now it's just getting everything consistent and clicking at one time, which is easier said than done. What do your coaches have or what have they recommended as far as just when you're going out there, do you have a plan in place? Do you play specific games? Do you, are you a range rat? I mean, what, what's it look like when you're getting out to practice? Yeah, I love, um, I love the range. Uh, and what I do when I practice is I have a couple of drills I'm working on and I'll do those drills consistently. And what I'm really working on now is just center face contact and making sure that I'm putting the best swing on the ball that I can every time I swing a club, right? So working on some drills that focus on that and then uh, working on uh, just making sure I'm not hitting that big slice and, and really getting to know my miss. Like I'm still new to the PXG family and having PXG clubs. So for me, it's uh, right now really working on dialing in those distances and knowing what what am I going to hit a seven iron if I flush it? And what am I going to hit a seven iron if I hit it toey or, or whatever else, right? And building that into my game. Um, as far as practice goes, dude, I could just go bang balls all day, but I, I'm i not good at, at structural practice. And I never have been. So that's kind of um, kind of a weak spot for me. Do you try to get out and like get nine holes in? 
couple times a week or go try to play a full 18 or what does that look like knowing you have the kiddos at home and all the other stuff? I try, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a toss up. I'll play like a full 18 two or three times a month. Um, but with that too, like Alex, my wife knows like social media, golf, social media is a thing for me now. So going to play, isn't just me going right. and having a couple drinks with the boys and, and playing a money game on Saturday, Sundays. Right. It's, it's work at this point. Like I'm going out I'm, I got my, my buddy Tyler that shoots photos. Like I have my camera, I'm going to film some stuff. Like I'm going to work. I'm going to play golf, but I'm going to work. So with the kids, it's all about like, maximizing my time I do get on the golf course so I'll play a full 18 holes two or three times a month probably um, and still trying to break 80 in the you know, on camera right like I've done it twice but uh, my whole goal is to do it on camera and then so I can really say I, I've done it because the last time I did it it was kind of BS <laughs> it's, yeah so BS in what way like couple gave yourself a couple strokes here maybe took a putt no it was legit I just it was before, like, I really played golf seriously. Um, it was the day before I proposed to my wife, actually, at Costa Mesa Country Club in Costa Mesa, California. And I shot 78, but I, I just wasn't a golf social media person. Now I have a story right. behind it, and I'm actually trying. It, there's, there's momentum, right? Like, I've put the pressure on me. Now i got to perform. What's going to be – what do you feel is, like, the big kicker that – when the, when the one thing clicks is, or is there one thing that, you know, like, man, it, I got to get that dialed in. It's putting it all together at one time, right? Like I, I probably could have done it the day I played with Scott at Kiowa because if I played from the tee boxes that I normally play from, uh, because I shot, I shot 84, a legit 84. He didn't give me any shots from, like 7,200 yards. Like I never play over like 68. 68 is kind of my limit. I play from the blue tees and like, that's just kind of where I live. 68, 65, like kind of right in that the wheelhouse. He had me playing from like 72 or 7,400 at Kiowa, like one of the hardest Jeez. courses in America. And I shot 84 and played lights out. So I think I could have done it that day. Um, I wasn't driving the ball very well, but I – was chipping and putting and everything else was kind of clicking iron play was clicking so for me the biggest thing is getting like i struggle with concentration of course i, I know it like i have add um had add as a kid um concentrating for a full 18 holes is, is my biggest issue and uh getting everything to click right like having the putting chipping iron play and driving which I mean, it's hard enough for the pga tour players and who practice 10 hours a day get us out there it's all damn near impossible what was it like playing with playing with him was that the first time you'd played with a pga tour player yeah that was the first time it was it was impressive like the only thing the only the only way i can describe it is impressive the sound the ball makes and if you've listened if you're listening to this you've probably been to a pga tour tournament so you know what it sounds like but every time, like it doesn't, it didn't matter the shot. It didn't matter if he hit a bad one before and bad is a relative term, but it didn't matter if he hit a bad one before every shot flushed it with like he hit one, he, there was a par five, I think it was a third or fourth hole at Kiowa. Um, and we played Cougar point. So it's not like the ocean course, but it was Cougar point. There, I think four or five was the, uh, was a par five. He hit driver seven wood. And the ball flight on that seven wood and the sound that it, that ball had coming off that club was crazy. And then he had like 10 feet for Eagle. Like that, that was the craziest part for me that he, he just made the game look so easy when I was struggling. Like I was hitting in the freaking bushes. Like it was crazy, but he PJ tour players just make it look so easy that you see it and you're like, Oh yeah, I could do that. And it gives you the false perception. You go out to the range, you're like, oh, shit, maybe not today. Would, do you think playing with him that day, because obviously you played pretty decent, playing at a much much longer distance, shot an 84. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like playing with him up to your game a little bit? And, sure. and was it because of just kind of watching him? or 
because that could also be a very pressure filled situation going and playing with a PJ tour player for the yeah. first time. I've always um, been this person. I, when I was surfing competitively, when I was like crossfitting, whatever else, I always perform up to the competition and then also down to the competition. If I'm playing with my buddies that are shooting like high nineties, like I'm going to be in the nineties too. And I, I just know that I've always been that kind of person that I'm playing to the competition. It's all relative to me that I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to play to that. Um, so for, for him, I just, I knew that that was probably going to be the case given my past athletic performances in my life. Uh, I just played up to the competition and granted, I still got beat by 15 strokes, but I think he shot, he shot 62 and left a few strokes out on the course. And if you, if you listen to my podcast, you've heard the story, but he, he played, he played pretty good. I'll say that. I was going to say, what was like his demeanor out there? I mean, is he out there having a good time? Is he pretty serious when he's playing, even though, and was it just you two out there or was it? Uh, it, it was me, him, uh, and my photographer, my friend Tyler, who came down with me to Kiowa. He, he, it was just like playing with one of your buddies, right? He was joking with me, give me some tips on the tee box, like give me some, give me some crap on the tee box as well. Um, hit a bad one. He joked with me too. He, I mean, he, it's just like playing with one of his buddies. One thing he did say, cause I asked him on my podcast, um, do you drink on the course? A lot of people do, right? Transfusions and beer or whatever else. Yeah. And he, he doesn't drink on the course. Right. And he's like, I don't want to, if I go out and shoot a career low, think it's because of the alcohol. Right. Which makes sense. Like, yeah. And I thought about that after the fact. I was like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have the white claws on the course then maybe that's a good idea for me. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it was just like playing with one of my buddies here in Wilmington. I mean, there, there was really no difference. He wasn't super serious. It wasn't like you're playing with Tiger and he doesn't talk to you. Um, he, he, was, he was just one of the boys. That's awesome. What's your I- ideal round of golf look like? Is it music? Is it with the guys? Is it competitive? Is it? I'm, absolutely, dude. It's with the... Um, I love playing with my father-in-law because like at the end of the day, like I love the competition. I hate losing, but I love the competition and the banter we have. So playing with him, definitely got to have music. Scott had music on. So the people that think that you can't play golf with music, not in your camp guys. Uh, I have a, a good speaker just hooks onto the, to the cart and it's awesome. I love a little music on the course, um, but yeah, just ideally, playing golf with, with some friends, my father-in-law, having a good time and at a, at a good course too. Like I'm pretty jaded at this point in my life. Like I don't, I don't get up and excited to go play the Wilmington Muni, which people probably won't like to hear that. But I, I love getting the, the opportunity to play some of the, the best courses in America, Kiowa, Pinehurst, uh, wh- whatever it may be. I love that. Yeah. Where's, where has uh, your travels taken you so far? What are some of the best places? Portugal was pretty cool. Whoa. I wasn't yeah. expecting one out of, out of the borders. Yeah. So with um, with Bonobos a few years ago, the brand Bonobos out of New York, they took myself, Brody Smith, um, Patrick Koenig, who's a golf photographer. Yeah. And um, I forget Ben's last name, but Ben is the editor, was the editor, is the editor. I'm not sure what he does now. At Esquire Magazine. Um, took us on a golf trip to Portugal for four days. That was that was cool because that was my first European experience. I'd never been to Europe before. I'd never played golf out of the country. So that, that was definitely up there. Um, it, yeah, that was, that was pretty insane. That's incredible. So what would you say your, do you have a big goal set for 2021 as far as the golf game is concerned? Besides the break 80, uh, we, we know break 80. Is there anything That's the on top one. of that? I mean, get a hold of one. That's a, that's up there too. Never had one of those. Um, yeah, break eighty is kind of the big one. And then, as far as golf goes, just want to continue to tell the story of me getting breaking eighty and and what I'm doing to do that and help and help create digestible content for golfers like you and me to be able to listen to and, and grab some information from that can help them. Right? Like, golf's not fun if you you suck at it. It's not fun if you're hit, if you like can't break ninety or can't break hundred. Um, so that's I created the little Instagram TV series sucks to suck because that's 
That's the truth. Like, it sucks to suck at golf. Uh, you want to beat your friends. You want to win some money. So just continue to create that content and continue to give people a little insight and a look behind the curtain of what it takes and what I'm doing. Maybe it can help them too. So let's talk to maybe like the 20 handicapper right now. So Mm -hmm. I think this is a a fun conversation to have. What has taken you from the time where maybe you were a 20 handicapper, if you were ever there, um, down to now being an 11, soon to being a single digit, uh, cause obviously we know that, that, you know, to go from 20 to, to 10 is one notch and then to go 10 to five is one thing. And then, so you hit all these different levels, but I think that there's things that, that you and I both as, you know, average golfers, but at an 11 can, can tell a 20 handicapper, like this has helped me. What, what would you say are a couple of those things? And they might be fitness related. They might be on the course, on the practice, or just up in, up here between the ears. I think, I mean, I, I'm going to preface this with I'm not a golf professional. So take whatever advice I give you. Um, don't don't take it to heart, maybe or do I don't know. But I'm not a golf professional, so just I'll well let, let's there. let's just maybe phrase it as what do you think has helped you go from 20 to 11? That way, nobody can come back and say you guys are idiots. No, it's fine. They can call me an idiot. People do it all the time. So. I mean, for me, it's just repetition, right? And my buddy, Zach, just started playing golf a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And he just got to the point in last, maybe last summer, where he could break 100 consistently. And I keep kept telling him, I was like, dude, go to the driving range. Go hit golf balls. And then once you get to the point where you can hit it in the air consistently and you know roughly what your yardages are, go get a lesson. Go talk to somebody. Go go talk to the PGA pro at whatever country club you, you're close to and and really dial it in because they're smarter than you will ever be in the game of golf, right? So for me, and I've honestly never been like a 20 handicapper, I guess, because growing up playing the game, I've played the game since I was probably six years, maybe five years old. I've just – naturally progressed and naturally had roughly the same golf swing, but I've always gotten lessons and always had, had coaches, um, whether it be in like junior leagues to middle school to high school when I played on a golf team, uh, I've always had somebody smarter than me telling me, giving me some advice and giving me some information. So once you get to the point where you can hit the ball consistently and you're not like whiffing it, go get a lesson. 100%. Find, find a PGA pro local to you. Get on, um, give go is an app I use for a lot, get up, get, get some tips, figure it out, but utilize the people around you that are smarter. Just figure it out yourself. It's going to work. And what about from a, a fitness angle for the guys? And I'll maybe go an age range here more so than a handicap level. Um, mm-hmm. obviously you're 31. A lot of people listening to the show are probably even above that, maybe decades above that. What would you yeah. say has been a key for you? fitness wise or just body wise that has really helped um in this journey and you know we'll continue to only uh, only make benefits getting getting my body stronger lifting weights and being able to to move the way i do is definitely the biggest benefit and has helped me like continue to increase my swing speed from the time i was like 20 to 31 to hopefully into my 40s um so lifting weights and getting stronger and having that body awareness has been huge for me personally. And I think if you're a high school golfer, aspiring college golfer, from the conversations I've had with, with college coaches and strength coaches, getting in the gym and working out is imperative to your growth as a golfer and your, and your strength and your muscle, comp, uh, your muscle compensation, not compensation. It's not a word I'm looking for. Composition. Uh, composition. There you go. Uh, I need another cup of coffee. Your muscle composition, everything. Getting in the gym, lifting weights for a younger golfer is imperative once you get to a certain age, right? Once you're like 13 or so. After that, I think just being a good athlete until a certain age, maybe 35, 40, and then mobility. Mobility is the biggest thing that 99.99999% of golfers overlook. They just don't do. Like You don't see people – really stretching on the range you might see a guy take a two clubs and kind of swing and get his back moving a little bit pop an advil but 
mobility is the biggest thing that I, people just it, it's overlooked in golf mobility is 100 percent the most important thing you can do yeah we, for everybody i think it's amazing you know we we and obviously we preach the strength piece here at 18 strong uh, makes a lot of sense and and i think that that ultimately is like the the biggest we call it the mother of all athletic qualities right and that's the Mm -hmm. kind of the thing that will help every bit of your your athletic prowess but it's it's also those those movement pieces the mobility things that you just a lot of us don't want to do like it's fun to go in for most guys to go in lift some weights and you know get stronger in the gym um and there's ways where you have to learn how to do that properly. But then there's also those other things that you can do at the end of your workout. Or we even set up on our app, we do a lot of like a separate day of just, we call them move days, just some different yeah. movement patterns to go through. And it's like those end up being the things that people like send us messages like, oh man, I didn't realize how, first of all, how bad I move, but second, how mm-hmm. much better I feel after going through something like that. And so that mobility piece, I think it's, it's great that you mentioned that there. All right, my man, I got a couple questions that I, I ask everybody at the end of the show. And these questions have actually been evolving over the last couple of years, but uh, it's a fun way to just kind of finish out the, the show. If you're uh, ready for a couple of the, uh, the questions here. Yeah, let's do it. All right, brother. Uh, so first one is what's your favorite golf book, uh, golf movie of all time. Hmm. I don't really have a favorite golf movie. I guess Happy Gilmore. All right. So originally we used to ask Caddyshack or Happy Gilmore. So I, we'll we'll take that as a as a good Happy one. Gilmore. Do you have a uh, Do you have a favorite golf book that you've read or would recommend to anybody out there? Yes, it's a fiction. It's called Tight Lies. Um, it is sort of a golf book, sort of like a spy novel, kind of like a. a James Bond, um, sort of in that mold. It's about a, uh, it's about a European tour caddy who gets um, looped into the role of a spy. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like like mystery, true crime books and and um, conspiracy books, and it's it's got all that stuff. It's good. Sweet. That's not definitely not one that's been recommended before. Tight right. lies. It's a good one. Tight lies. All right, if you could pick a walk-up song, what's your walk-up song to the first tee box? I don't know. Some, something hip-hop, for sure. It'd be some, uh, Thug Motivation 101, Young Jeezy. Nice. That was, my, uh, that was our uh, basically our theme song in high school football. I still love the album. It's a great album. There we go. All right, if you could pick a dream foursome, so you and three other guys, and this could be anyone, past, present, who would you pick? And where would you want to play with them? Greg Norman, um, my dad, because my dad passed away when I was two, so, and I've never, and I obviously never got to play golf with him. And he was a really good golfer, played semi professionally uh, before law school. So definitely Greg Norman. My and Greg Norman's like a hero of mine. So if you're Greg Norman and you're listening to this, please get in touch with me. I would love to talk to you. Um, he might be the only person, like, I don't even think I'd be starstruck around Tiger, but I'd definitely be starstruck around Greg Norman. Really? Uh, What's yeah. the fascination with Greg Norman? I don't know, man. It's everything that I enjoy, fitness, golf, like, he's, he's embodied it. The, the fact that he came so close, never won the Masters, never really got over that hump. Um I don't know. It, Greg Norman just has, he, he's Australian, he likes surfing. We've got a lot in common. I, I just always love Greg Norman. He's always been my favorite golfer. And in the fact that he has built an empire, literally an empire outside of golf, right? From the clothing to his steakhouses to his golf course design to his golf carts and all the businesses that he started to run and his son has started to run. It's cool. Um, so I really admire Greg Norman. So it'd be my dad, Greg Norman, and then I don't know, my father-in-law maybe. I, I, he would be pissed if I didn't add him to that group with Greg Norman. Um, or Tiger Woods. I would like to hear the banter and just be a fly on the wall. So yeah, that it'd be a pretty cool foursome. And where do you guys? Where do you want to play? That's a tough one. Where would I want that foursome to play? Or where, where, I where would you want that foursome to play? Oh man, Piner's number two. 
Awesome. Yeah. All right, love, what's... That love, love that. Uh, I love Pinehurst. I go there a good bit and it's, it's local to me. So I love Pinehurst. Gotta be there. What's one exercise that you despise, but you continue to do on a regular basis? Cause you know, it's good for you. Like what is it? Assault bike, whatever, whatever the exercise is, doesn't matter. Assault bikes. I just bought one. It, it, I don't regret the purchase. I love it, but I also hate it. It's a love hate. That's for sure. We did a workout this morning, me and my buddy, Kevin, and, uh, it was 40, 30, 20 assault bike calories. And then after every round of assault bike, you did 15 burpee box jumps. It, it sounds disgusting. It, it was terrible. His, I think he said his heart rate spiked up to 187. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, are you dying? Yeah. yeah, somebody call the ambulance, please. <laughs> Let me get you some water. Take a break. Take a breather. Oh. All right, if there's one course that you've already played, or what's the one course that you've already played that you would pick if it was the only course you could ever play again? Pinehurst number four. Number four. That's the one they just redid, right? Yeah, Gil Hans redid that one. I guess it was 2016 or 2017. Um, it's very a very similar feel to number two. And if I had to pick, and people ask me all the time because I go to Piners, basically a Piners expert at this point. Um, if I only could play one course there, it'd be number four. And if I had to play one course for the rest of my life, it'd be number four. It's it's cool, man. There's it's always in great shape. It's similar to number two because you're in the pines and you have all that waste area, right, that you can ground your club in. Um, it doesn't have the history that number two does as far as U.S. Open history and, and being a Donald Ross course and this, that, and the other. But it has everything else you want. It has crazy elevation changes, cool views. You can stand on the fifth tee and see, like, 16 holes. Um, it, it's – or the fifth green, rather, and see 16 holes. It's, it's awesome. Number four, for sure. How's the brewery there? I, I've seen a lot of stuff about the, the okay. Pinehurst Brewery. I'm not a fan of craft beer. So I go and I drink like transfusions or I drink wine or something. So people kind of make fun of me for that. The beer is good. So don't get me wrong. Like I had Eric from Pinehurst Brewery on my podcast and we talked about it. They have a beer there for everybody. So if you're not a beer person, you can still walk up and say, I'm not a beer person, like what you recommend. And they'll have something you probably will like. The beer's great, um, but the food there is amazing. That barbecue brisket big, uh, cheeseburger, <laughs> it, it, it throw every diet you have. I know mean, this is a fitness podcast, but throw every diet you have out the window when you go in there. It is amazing. That's good to know. I, I'm marking that one on my, on my sheet for sure. Definitely. Definitely. All right, last one. What's the best piece of golf advice that you'd like to share with the 18 strong community? Best keep piece of golf advice you've ever gotten. Man, I think I already said it. It was definitely the, uh, don't take advice, advice from your buddy. <laughs> Cause that's like taking legal advice from your doctor. Um, but then I, at the same time, I kind of throw that in my own face and I give swing advice. So who knows? Um, nah, that's, that's a good one to have. It's a good one to keep in the back of your mind. Um, there's so much conflicting information in the golf world as far as the golf swing goes. You just have to figure out what works for you. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, golf advice is, I don't know. I don't like giving golf advice, even though I do it all the time. <laughs> that's that's going to be one of my favorite quotes of the podcast of all time. All right, well, man, where can people go find yeah. you, check out your stuff, and, um, and tell us about anything exciting that you have in the works that we haven't been able to share yet? Yeah, so you'd follow me on Instagram, Blair Wheeler, TikTok. I'm new, new to the TikTok world. Um, Blair Wheeler 89. Somebody else took Blair Wheeler. It's kind of come on. Uh, didn't what an ideal. Um, my podcast is the Blair Wheeler Project podcast. Yeah, a lot of the same topics you cover, Jeff. You cover on that golf, fitness, travel. Um, I'm, I'm having Bryce Butler on supposed to record today i think we're going to record tomorrow so next week when this comes out i believe we're going to have it's going to be my podcast with bryce butler um some other podcast guests in the works uh, ryan moore pga tour player scott's going to be on again soon hopefully bryson dechambeau will get back to me on my dms I have a slid into his dms see if he responds um so, so yeah do it. yeah that's the only way so uh yeah 
Blair Wheeler Project Podcast, at Blair Wheeler on Instagram, on Twitter, same. I don't use Twitter. I hate Twitter, but I'm there. And uh, yeah, I'm working on some things right now, but I can't get into it quite yet soon. We'll, we'll give, give you some more information on what I'm working on soon. Hopefully. Stay tuned is what we like to say, Stay right? Tuned. Awesome, man. Well, it's been it's been great having you on the show. It's it's great to finally connect and uh, see each other face to face and and be able to chat about some stuff that we both enjoy and love. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck, and we'll be following the journey for sure. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us this week on the 18 Strong Podcast. If you want more any more information on Blair, you can go to 18strong.com. And check out episode number 310. We've got the show notes right there with links to his social media profiles and other things that we talked about in this episode. Another reminder to go check out Linksoul at 18strong.com slash Linksoul to get your 20% off discount on anything that Linksoul has from the, the cotton cashmere hoodie to the t-shirts to their bamboo five pocket pants, all of which I have on right here as well. And again, we have our new, brand new, 18 Strong Golf Fitness app, which we have hundreds of golfers already on and using and loving. They love the the lift workouts, the move workouts, the burn workouts. You finally have a plan in place. It's right there on your phone. It's on your mobile device that tells you what you need to do every single day to become the best version of you to play your best golf. So go check that out. You can just go to 18strong.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage. All right, we'll catch up with you again next week. Train hard, practice smart and play your best golf.